Welcome to the Continuum Lab. What I love doing the most here in the lab is making MIDI wind instruments. And I'm really proud of the one that I made this week, which you just saw in the intro. I call it Tron, the MIDI trombone, with this fantastic virtual slider here. I can't wait to show you how this works, and that's what this video is about. I will show you the whole process of how I made it, how I put together the code, and how it's played. So let's do it. So, a trombone. As usual, I've uh, gathered together all the materials that I think I'll need right here. And you might be looking at this and thinking, that's never going to be a trombone. There isn't enough material here to make a slide. But that's because I'm going to make a virtual slide. And I'm going to use this sensor for that. This is a sonar rangefinder, basically an ultrasound distance sensor. And that goes at the end of the instrument so that I can measure the distance to my hand while I do this kind of slide gesture here. We'll get back to that in a minute. So the other main ingredient here of course is the breath sensor. And this is the material that I need for the pressure chamber. So I'm just going to quickly put this together. I have uh, several videos on my channel where I explain in detail how to make these pressure chambers and breath sensors. So I'll put some links in the description to that. But as you can see, that's really pretty simple. So that's the completed pressure chamber. The way this turns into a breath sensor is that I'm going to put this CNY70 sensor module right in front of it, and then uh, I'll be able to measure the distance to that membrane. So this is the entry tube, and this is what we'll be blowing into. But I'm going to uh, add a mouthpiece to this, which will help me to measure lip tension. And that's what I need this uh, food grade plastic here for, as well as this piece of uh, copper sticky tape. These cables here are just for connecting the sensor to the microcontroller and then the cardboard is for making our basic structure. Let's cut out a suitable piece of cardboard. So I want to make a piece that's roughly 10 centimeters wide and roughly 30 centimeters long. I made a video a while back about how to emulate uh, brass instrument mouthpieces in a MIDI instrument. It looks like this. Nice. That works pretty well. And so that's the kind of mouthpiece that I'm going to be incorporating into this build. So I'll find the middle of this piece, which is right there. And then I will build out from there scoring these uh, lines of the corrugation in this cardboard so that I can fold it up like this. So as you can see now we can comfortably fit the pressure chamber in there and that gives us a total width of about 3.4 centimeters. Excellent! So that'll be the width of the rest of the pieces that go around here to close up our structure. Yeah, that looks great. Now I just need to uh, cut out this curved shape here at the end. Excellent. And then we can bend it down right here. So then this is going to be the mouthpiece section right here. And that means that this is the front of the instrument. So I'll need to put this sensor, as I mentioned, right here at the front. So before I glue everything together, I'm going to just insert that sensor right here. Uh, 
there. Yeah, that looks great. For some reason, this is now looking like some kind of prehistoric camcorder or something. Okay, I'll put a couple of drops of glue around this sensor here so that it doesn't wiggle loose. So I don't need all of these pins here, I actually only need three of them. We have ground and five volts up on this end here, although I'm pretty sure that this will work just fine with three volts as well. And then the analog pin is the third one from the bottom. So, so now ground is white, voltage is gray, and my analog pin is this red color here. Excellent, and now I'm ready to glue this piece onto this one here. I want to be able to open up the instrument here at the bottom to access the electronics and sensors. So this lid here is the last thing I'm going to figure out. If I am to play this like a trombone, then I will use my right hand for the virtual slide as it were, and then I need to hold onto this with my left hand. So an acoustic trombone has a bar that you hold onto right around here. And instead of that, I'm actually just going to make a hole which will allow my thumb to pass through inside the instrument and hold on as if that bar were there. There. And then I'm just going to fold it in so that this piece of cardboard here will be the surface that my thumb rests on. Let's see. Nice. That is perfect. So now I just need to stabilize this flap here. I want this to be quite strong because I'm going to be holding on to it, pinching it with my thumb. So, so I've been working with cardboard a lot and I have some tricks for this. Uh, what I'm going to do is inject some hot glue into some of these holes here, a little bit from both sides, and that's going to solidify this piece here a lot. So this is a pretty simple operation. You just insert the glue gun like that, push out a little bit. Don't overdo it, you don't want the glue dripping out on the other side. There. Once that sets, it's going to be really strong. And then I need to glue the flap to the back wall here, inside. Cool. So now I have somewhere to hold on to the instrument. That seems like it's going to be pretty comfortable. And then of course my mouth will go here. So that's the next thing I'll put together, the mouthpiece. Just need these two things here. So the way this works is I'm going to put this plastic over the surface, curving it around like that. There'll be a hole in it where the breath tube will pass through. And then underneath it I will have this piece of copper tape here which will work as a capacitive sensor measuring the amount of uh, surface area that my lips share with the mouthpiece. So that will roughly translate into lip tension, which I will then use to make my note selection from a series of harmonics. I have a whole video on how this works, so there's a link to that in the description. So first I'm going to just try to curve this a little bit to help with the process. Something like that. Nice. Next I want to make a hole in the plastic. Let's see. Say right there. Take your time with this process. What we want to do is slowly score the plastic in a little circle so that in the end the piece just falls out by itself. There. That looks very nice. It's a little bit too small to comfortably put the tube through right now, but you can just push a pencil through it. Yeah, that'll stretch it a little bit. And then you can put the tube through. The tube is under constant tension there, which is going to help with the seal. Okay, so that goes there. Which means that I want to make a hole in the cardboard right there. Let's see. Excellent. That's going to fit very nicely. And uh, 
Now I need to apply the capacitive sensor. I think this is probably a little bit too big. I'll cut it down. Something like that. I'll just peel the backing off there. Oh no, that was that was silly. Keep the backing on there for a second. We need to make a hole in this, right in the center. Uh, something like that, more or less. Now we're ready to stick it on there. Oh, damn it! I stuck the <laughs> stuck the copper to the wrong side of the backing. Ah, oh, damn it! Okay, I'm gonna have to make a new one of these. So, there's the new sensor. So let me just stick that on the inside there. And I'll need to make a hole for that cable. So that's gonna go right there. Cool. So I'm actually just going to glue this whole mouthpiece on there right now. We need to put some glue on the surface here and we need to let it cool for a bit. We just let it sit there for a little while. Now I think we're ready. Okay, that went pretty well. Okay, let's just clean up here a little bit. Cool, so now we need to set up the breath sensor and we also need to put the uh, microcontroller in here somewhere. So let's see how we distribute this. First the breath tube, leaving a few millimeters on the outside like that. So I want the pressure chamber to sit in that curve in there. And then I need to uh, insert the CNY70 right in front of the membrane. And so that setup will also make me plenty of space for the microcontroller that's going to sit somewhere in there. So rather than glue the pressure chamber into place, I'm just going to make a couple of blocks of cardboard that I can glue in around it to hold it in place. Okay, so that's what that looks like. A few um, pieces of cardboard here holding everything together. So I'll be able to actually remove the pressure chamber if I need to. So now I need to uh, put a piece of cardboard here in front that I can then put this sensor onto. I think the distance is good. So I just decided that I'm going to make this part here permanent. I'm going to glue that on there and then this will be the lid that I can open and close. the sensor on there. So I set everything up so that the distance between the membrane and the CNY70 is about five millimeters. That should give me a decent sensitivity and resolution. So now I've sort of complicated things a little bit for myself because now I need to insert this somehow. Um, okay. Let's plug in the sensors first. So these three here for the rangefinder, I'm going to plug those into pin 25, ground, three volts, and the analog pin. These three are from the CNY70, I'm gonna plug those into pin 24, there. And then this final one here is from the capacitive lip sensor, and that goes on pin 16. And now all I need to do before I put the microcontroller inside is plug in a USB cable because it'll be really hard to access this once it's inside. 
Okay, and I need to make sure that the exit tube here also has somewhere to go. And now I can try to insert this. Okay. So I could have probably planned that a little bit better, but it's actually working out pretty okay. So the exit tube for the breast sensor can go through there. And then I'm just making a couple of little cutouts here. One is for that tube, the other is for the USB cable. Okay, wow. Is that perfect? No, definitely not. Uh, will it work? I think so. The trombone prototype is done. Oh, actually, let me just adjust that a little bit. Something like that. And this as well. Nice. Yeah, so it's a little rough around the edges, but uh, I think it's going to work. And the next thing, of course, is to plug this into the computer, get some code on here and see if I can't make some noise. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are in Arduino and I'm just starting to write the code and uh, test out the instrument. And I found a problem, a very annoying problem. So as you can see, we seem to be getting some good readings here. And the first reading on the left here is the distance sensor. So check this out. So as you can see, when I hold my hand right up in front of it, I'm getting a reading of about 14, and then the maximum distance would be around here, which gives me a reading of about 45. So that turns out to be a really, really low resolution for what I want. If I point this away, say at the ceiling, I get a much higher number, which basically just means that this sensor here specifically is meant for longer distances, not for these precise measurements that I'm trying to make here. So let's think for a second. We have a resolution of maybe 30 points maximum, is that enough for what I want to do here? This sensor here is supposed to do the job that the slide on the trombone does. And on the trombone, you basically get a range from the sliding motion of about seven semitones. So with 30 points of resolution, I could easily map that to the seven semitones and I would be able to play this instrument just fine. But the change between one note and the next would be abrupt because I don't have enough resolution to implement pitch bend on such a large range. You could argue that that should be fine, I can just implement the uh, semitones and that's it. But I really think that the fun of a trombone is that it's a naturally pitch bendy instrument with this 7 semitone range of sliding pitch. So I really want to see if I can implement that. So in order to try to make that work, I actually have a different sensor here, which is a sharp distance sensor. This uh, is different than the other sensor in that it works with infrared light and this one works with um, ultrasound. So I happen to know that this sensor has a much shorter range and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now I don't actually want to get rid of this sensor here, I'm just going to attach this other one right here on top and then I can uh, compare and maybe try to do something with both of them. So I guess I'm just going to stick it like right there, for example. Then I can just pull the cables through here. Excellent. And then I can plug it into the breakout board. I'm going to put this one on pin 23. Cool, so we're back in Arduino. Uh, I'm just going to change this here to pin 23 and then we should be reading the new sensor. Let's try and upload that. Let's try and open the serial monitor. There. Okay, so let's see what we get. So right up close, we're at 730. And then we start going, okay, we're getting much higher resolution here. So yeah, that looks much more promising. That should be plenty of resolution to implement the slider as pitch bend. So, excellent. Problem solved. Now I can get back to writing some code. So I'm back and I'm happy to say that I finished the rest of the code and everything is working correctly. So that's what I'm about to show you. As usual, I've saved a few snapshots during development, so let's jump straight into sketch number two. 
So as you can see, I've added quite a few variables here, uh, minimum and maximum values for each sensor, and uh, also keep track of the last reading on each sensor. And all of that is so that I'm able to map the reading of each sensor into sensible values. In the case of the breath sensor, it is a MIDI value of 0 to 127. Although I have no MIDI output yet, I'm still just printing it to serial. And then on the slide, I'm uh, mapping between 0 and 6. And this is because on the trombone slide, you're able to uh, vary the pitch by roughly seven semitones, and so zero to six gives me that range. And then on the lip sensor, I'm actually mapping between zero and five, and this is just uh, because I decided that I would be able to do up to six different harmonics with the lip tension reading. So that's what this whole main uh, loop here does. Let's try and upload that. Let's open the serial monitor. Okay, looking pretty good. First of all, let's check the slide sensor, which is now this infrared distance sensor here in the front. So I can put my hand in front of that and I can see that it now goes to zero. And then as I move away further away, it goes up to six. So that's excellent. That's about, uh, say, 50 centimeters of distance. I think that'll be pretty decent for a uh, virtual trombone slide. So that's very good. Now let's check the breath sensor. That seems to be working very well. I get a clean reading between 0 and 127. And finally we have the lip sensor. So that's this thing here. And the way that works is that it basically measures the shared surface area between my lips and the sensor. And so I'll just squish my lips up against it with relaxed lips for a maximum reading. And then I start tensing them up, reducing the surface area that they share with the sensor to uh, reduce the reading. So that is uh, this one right here, the third column. So let's try that. That's maximum. And then I'll try to start tensing up. That seems to work really well. So uh, I'm basically getting very decent readings from all three sensors. Excellent. Let's uh, close this up and move on to sketch number three. So this sketch is a fully functional sketch with MIDI output and everything. Uh, I do have a sketch number four that I'm going to show you in a second, but number three is actually my preferred finished result. So uh, as you can see, the variables here are pretty much the same as before, but now I also introduce these variables here, which help me to keep track of what note is currently sounding. So here in the main loop, I'm still just like before reading these three sensors and mapping their readings to uh, sensible values. And just like before, the breath sensor is mapped between zero and 127. But unlike before, I've now mapped the uh, slide output between 0 and 127 as well. And that's because I'm going to implement this in this sketch as a pitch bend. And so I will pitch bend depending on the position of the slide. The lip sensor reading is now mapped only to five values instead of the six from before. It's just a little bit easier to control. And then there's this conditional thing down here which keeps track of the state of all the different sensors and outputs the corresponding MIDI notes. Please notice that there's no longer any serial output, so we're going to have to open up the software synthesizer to see if this works. Let's try and upload it. Excellent, and so now we can open up Yoshimi. So here we are in Yoshimi, and uh, I've connected the synthesizer through Jack, and I've selected one of my open horn MIDI system synthesizers, this one, which worked really well with the, the wind instrument output. So let's see if everything works. First of all, the breath sensor. Of course, that's no surprise. This is the standard breath sensor that I use in most of my instruments. It works great. Now the lip sensor. That's supposed to generate different harmonics. Let's try that out. It works fine, it's a little bit rough, or maybe actually I'm a little bit rough around the edges as far as playing a trombone technique. I seem to be getting a little bit of jibbery jumping uh, action between notes uh, just as I switch over. So I might have to tune the filter for this sensor a little bit. Okay, so, moment of truth. Let's try the virtual slide here and see what we get. I'm going to just try to play the lowest note here in the mouthpiece and then only change the pitch bend. Let's see.
<laughs> that's pretty awesome. But I can tell right now that it's uh, not pitch bending enough. See, the trombone slide is supposed to give me seven semitones of range, and this right now is just doing a standard pitch bend of two semitones in each direction, so a total of four semitones. Now, there's no way to actually change that in the MIDI protocol itself, so I won't change any of the code, but I can change how Yoshimi receives those MIDI messages. So if we go into uh, the controllers here, then we can change the pitch wheel range here. Right now it's at 200, so that's two semitones. I need this to pitch bend three and a half semitones in each direction. So let's go to 350. So that should be working now, let's check it out. Oh, nice. Nice, so that's super intuitive. It works exactly like a slide on a trombone. But now, of course, what I need to do is combine that with this to give me access to all of the notes. And, and that's where it gets really complicated. So let's, let's see. I'll start with the lowest note and the lowest pitch bend. That is blowing my mind. I'm definitely not a trombone player. So as I mentioned, the uh, third sketch that we were using just now is the one that I consider the final version, is the one that I will be using. But I did make an alternate version as an experiment. So let's have a look at that. Here's sketch number four. So this sketch is basically exactly the same as number three, except where it deals with pitch bend. As you can see here, where we're reading the slide, instead of mapping it between 0 and 127 and outputting pitch bend, I'm now mapping it between 0 and 6. And this represents the seven semitones that we're supposed to be outputting from the slide. The reason why I even find this interesting is because uh, of the low resolution I was getting on the ultrasound sensor. So even with that low resolution, I'll still be able to output reliably these seven points for the seven semitones. However, ultimately, a trombone with no pitch bend at all is just not terribly interesting, as you will see in a second. So anyway, to finish up here, uh, the uh, pitch bend part here has been commented out, and then instead I'm simply adding the slide out value to the bass note to produce this current note here. And so that's how that works. Let's try and upload it. Excellent. Need to reconnect the synthesizer. There. So let's see. Yeah, it's not terribly interesting to play. Um, yeah, I don't like that very much. It's uh, first of all, it's not a very good trombone emulator, and second of all, it's just kind of jittery and weird. The pitchman version is much more intuitive. You can kind of look for the note and play it and tune it. So, as is probably obvious by now, I am no trombonist. I know the theory of how this works uh, and how to reproduce all the different notes and how the acoustic version works, a column of air that vibrates and all that. But of course that's no substitute for practicing and training with an instrument for years and years to get good at it. I would love to get this into the hands of a real trombone player to see what they think about it, if they're able to make sense of it and uh, make music with it. But since we're still in quarantine, that's not going to happen right now. So instead, I'm gonna have to sit down with this instrument here and practice for a good few hours just to be able to make some half-decent music for the beginning and the end of the video. So that's what I'm going to do right now. See ya. Sorry, just one more thing. I promise this is the last one. I'm really sorry this is so stop and go, but I'm literally making this up as I go along. So I've been playing this for a while now and it really does work quite well. But there is one annoying thing which is making it kind of hard to play, uh, which I really feel like I need to fix before I can move on. And it has to do with the range of the slide. This sensor here, as we saw before, has really nice resolution and uh, a very useful range for the length of my arm, but it turns out that that resolution is very uneven over that range. So what I mean by that is that the first bit of range here out at the end of the reading doesn't provide much change, but then the last 15 centimeters or so gives really a lot of change. So this can probably best be described with a curve that looks something like this. It basically means that it's really hard to control the precise pitch up here, and then down here you need to make really large movements to move the pitch at all. 
Now, luckily, this can actually be fixed with a bit of math inside the code, and so I've put together this definitely final sketch. We're now at number five. This sketch here is exactly the same as number three, except that uh, at the end of it, I've added this function here called F scale. So what this function does is it generates a curve, much like the one that I showed you before, but I'm going to use it to generate an inverted curve, and then I'm going to multiply the slider result with that. And the way I define how F scale works is by introducing this factor here. After a bit of experimenting, I found that a factor of three nicely smooths out the uh, readings from the slide, and so that's what I'm going with. Let's try and upload that. Uh, reconnect the synthesizer. Let's see how that works. Oh yeah, that's much nicer. Now the first half of the sliding action basically gives the first half of the range. And then for the last half of the movement you get the same proportion. So that's really nice. Now I don't need to make these exaggeratedly large movements at the end of the range. And now I'm able to get much more precise control at the upper part of the range. So that's awesome. I feel like that's going to be much easier to play now. Okay, back to practicing. Wow, what a trip. So on the one hand, the tram is really simple with only three sensors total. But on the other hand, it's quite complex in how I use those sensors. And of course, it's very hard to play for a non-trombone player. So sorry about that. Luckily, I might soon be able to get an actual trombone player to try this instrument out, which would be very cool, because we're actually reaching the end of the strict quarantine that we've been under here in Spain for the past few weeks. From yesterday, I'm actually allowed to go out every day for exercise, not just for essential shopping, and also more shops will be opening up this coming week. So that's definitely good news, but it also means the end of this series of Control Freak videos and the Quarantine Controller video series ends right here. Of course, there will be more content coming shortly from the Continuum Lab, but I think it's about time that I get back to the Continuum Lab instrument kit, so expect more news about that very soon. And that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Take care until next time, and I'll see you in the Continuum.